Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 6 of my Let's Play series. Last episode we built up a huge tree farm and this episode we are going to be working on a squid farm. So in between episodes I have gathered all of my sponges and I've set up a nether portal here so that I can dry them out easily. And this is just the water that I cleared last time, but right at the beginning of this episode, the first thing that I'm going to do is clear all of the water within a 128 block radius of where we are going to be AFKing for this farm, which is 64 blocks in the air. So I pretty much need to clear this river out to the ocean, this river out to the ocean, and then there's a couple smaller rivers around here, but I'm just going to quickly get that done, maybe do a little bit of uh, recording of me doing that. And then we can start on the actual farm itself. So let's do it. And there we go. I went through my two stacks of sponges about four or five times trying to get all these rivers cleared away. And I've flown around a bit. I'm out of firework rockets at the moment, but I have flown around a bit. And I think I have cleared enough water for this to work. So this is the point where the farm is, and then we have no river there, no river there. These little patches of water are not river, so they do not matter. You can check that by just going into F3, and it just says savannah, so squid can't spawn there. Anyway, so I believe I have knocked out all of the spawning spaces possible. I hope I am far enough away from this ocean. You can see squid spawning as I fly over here, but I think I'm far enough away. And if I need to AFK just a little bit this way to make up for it, I can. I'm, I'm not planning on clearing out an ocean. So the next thing that I need to do is dig down here. Squid can spawn from Y63 to, I believe, Y46. And then I need at least 10 blocks to make the squids fall and kill them. So I need to dig down probably 30, 35 blocks here. I have put up a beacon, so this shouldn't be too bad, and I just need to go one around with these pillars in each direction. But I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna drop the water in and build this farm up all in one time lapse here. So let's get it going. <laughs>
we've got the farm totally built up. I've just put in the water and covered up the top of the water sources here so the squid can't escape. So they spawn in these columns and then they fall down the sides and either killed by fall damage or if they're not, they will suffocate down there fairly quickly. And then I've also just built this up with some ice and black glass. This is a bubble elevator that brings all of the ink sacs up to our AFK spot. And then all we have to do to activate the bubble elevator is flick this lever right here and a signal gets sent down all the way through this wall, which you can actually watch happen. It changes the entire wall to the variation with the pillar in the middle, and then it updates that observer, and this clock starts firing that shoots all of our ink sacks up. And I believe this farm is going to be quite fast. It doesn't work while we're down there because of the ocean nearby, but as soon as we come up here, we should be 128 blocks away from that ocean over there and no squid should spawn. And what we should see here is squid start spawning. There we go, we can already see them. And then they fall down and they're killed. And then any second now we should see ink start to come flying up. There it is, start flying up. Oh yeah, and it's coming in fairly quickly. Yeah, there, look at it all. Oh my goodness, we've already gotten 30, 31, 32, 33. I wonder if this hopper is actually going to be able to keep up with the amount of ink that's coming in. So far it is. It hasn't gone up to two at all, so that uh, seems pretty good. I could have built this farm bigger, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. Uh, quite a few squid spawn and they all drop fairly quickly. Not sure why that one's not. Sometimes when they're right up at the top, I think they get stuck and it takes them a second to fall out. But look at that, we're already up over a stack. So this is going to create a lot of black dye for us, which black dye is the most difficult to get. So this is really good. He's the only one that doesn't seem to be. What if I can pick him off from here? No, it's not gonna work. Oh, I got him. <laughs> so yeah, they there. you just saw one spawn and fall and die and look at all the ink. So this is so that we can make black glass, gray glass, and also concrete and other things that we need black for and also light gray. So this is gonna be great. We needed quite a bit to do the glass on top of the wood farm over there. So now that we have this, flowing in, we will have a steady supply of black dye, whereas before I just went out to the ocean and spent a long time killing squids. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my 20 minute AFK here just to see how much ink we actually get. I'll remove this and then start timing 20 minutes and I think I'll do a little third person record just so that you can see how the farm itself is actually working, but let's get it going. So that was about 20 minutes, maybe just over. Wow, okay, so there's 18 and six. So what, 24 stacks? That's, wow, is that like, that must be like a thousand. 24 stacks is 1500 ink sacks? Is that, is that serious? This is three, six, nine, nine. 99 is 18 and 6 is 24 stacks. That's 1500 ink sacks, which means we're up at 4,600 ink sacks an hour. That is fantastic. Uh, farm is working really well. Let's just pop down here and make sure that nothing has gone wrong in here. So let's just fly in. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like any squid are getting stuck and the clock is still running fly out of there 
Well, this looks like it is working absolutely perfectly. Let's head back up top. And so now what I need to do is uh, get a shulker box over here and get all of these ink sacks picked up. But I would call this project a success. Didn't take that long with all of the water clearing and everything. It probably took me about five, six hours digging the hole, building the farm, emptying everything out, gathering the materials. But five, six hours for, for this many ink sacks, which translates to, to black dye, is uh, pretty fantastic considering I'd say that this is the hardest color to get in Minecraft. So I am very happy with that is the wrong pickaxe. <laughs> so I just broke this. Uh, yeah, so I am very happy with uh, how this project has gone. There's a little bit of ink that I just pulled out even before, just so that I could time it and look at it. It's just flowing in as fast as I can collect it. So this is fantastic. I'm gonna take a bunch with me now, and then I will, well, I'll leave a shulker box full to come back and get. And then I need to just go around here and collect up all of my shulker boxes and put them back away. Uh, that's my materials and then the other things that I dug from around here. So no, this is this is fantastic. I am super happy with the way that this farm turned out. So I'm going to collect up all these boxes and I'm going to head back over to the base. So, slight change of plans. I did head back to my base and I got some shulker boxes, but then I had to step away from the computer. So. I decided to leave my character up here for a bit while I did, and okay, yeah, <laughs> it did exactly what I wanted. Got us, this is what we got before, but now we have even more ink sacks and one salmon for some reason. It must have spawned in there while we were down below. Again, salmon can spawn only within a, uh, what is it, 64 block range of the character, whereas squid can spawn 128 away, so that's why we AFK up here is to stop the salmon from spawning, but look at that, I could just keep taking them out of here all day. But uh, this will be enough black ink for us for a bit. So I will take these three boxes, and I'm also going to strip this beacon down because I don't need it over here anymore. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gathering materials for our tree farm wall design and the roof which is going to be made of glass so i'm going to need some terracotta i planned on getting a bunch of terracotta a few episodes ago but i forgot to bring a beacon so i didn't do that so i'm going to grab some shulker boxes and i'm going to bring this beacon and i'm going to go back over to the mesa and i'm going to mine some terracotta and here we are back at the mesa so I'm going to set up a quick beacon here. Valuables and gold, that's what we need. Now for terracotta, I believe we only need haste one, so a small beacon should do. And then I need one gold ingot to make our beacon. And we should be able to instant mine. Let's find out. No, it hasn't given us the, there's the effect, yes. This is what I wanted to do last time. So, I brought a bunch of empty shulker boxes and I am going to grab a ton of terracotta so that I do not have to come back here anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> this way I can get all of this and then I can dye it whenever I need it. I'll just grab the plain variety. There's no sense in grabbing the colored ones when you can just get plain and dyes are so easy to get. This way you don't have to have multiple storages for terracotta, you just dye what you need. So I am going to mine here for a bit or until my pickaxe runs out of durability, whichever comes first. Wow, the range on... I always forget that the range on a small beacon is so short. Like, I walk that far away and it's down, so I might need to move it around a bit, but that's okay. I am going to mine, and I will be back. And we are back at the base. So I spent quite a bit of time there gathering terracotta. There's a bunch of stacks, and also all of these shulker boxes, I believe, are full that I brought over there. So this should do us for terracotta for 
quite a while. <laughs> you can get blocks pretty quickly when you're instant mining. So there we go. Uh, what I want to do quickly here is I've never had this much terracotta, but I'm going to add a filter in the mass storage over here next to the sand for the terracotta. Now I just have to remember whether it's the bottom or the top. It's the top, so I need to get up there. That's okay. I'll just fill her up. There we go. We just got to find the one with sand in it and do the next one. Or not sand, end stone is what was next. But there we go. So flip out the filter kelp for that. And now it will all drain into here. So now I'm just going to manually put all these in. They don't need to run through the storage system, but from now on, any terracotta that we do get will come into this filter. So I'm just going to fill all of this into here and see how much we got. All right, so six shulker boxes, three double chests, and a little bit of terracotta into the system. I'm going to dump off all these empty shulker boxes, but I'm going to keep a couple. And then I'm just going to toss this other stuff that I've got in my inventory that I don't put the filter kelp in there. Where is my box with the filter kelp in it? There it is. And so now it's all in there. And what I'm going to do is start collecting resources for the build of the walls for our tree farm. So first thing I need to do is grab some terracotta. Let's say 10, 15 stacks. Could have just left them in here, but that's okay. Nine and four, 13, 14, 15 stacks of terracotta. And then what else do we need? We need wood, which we've got over there. And we need dyes, and where we get cyan dye is over by the smelter, because that's where we smelted up all of our cactus. So somewhere here I believe I have a lot of cyan dye. Yes, here we go. So I'm going to make quite a bit of cyan terracotta. Let's lay this down. Cyan and terracotta makes cyan terracotta. There we go. This is what we were looking for when we did all this mining. Pop it back in there. Do a little bit more while we've still got dye. Yes, there we go. Okay, so I grabbed way more cyan than I actually needed. So we can put that back over here. Other dyes. Oh, there's bone blocks in there. Is it good for the farm? What else do we have? This is just sand, right? Sand and bamboo. Okay. So, ooh, it's nighttime. Sleep. I'll sleep in a second. Um, oh, I missed a stack. Why did I do that? Anyway, that should be enough. So now let's head over and let's talk block pallets. So I've got the materials that I think we need. This probably isn't enough cyan terracotta, but I could easily make more. I have gotten wool and combined with our ink sacks here, I am going to make a lot of black carpets, which I'm going to lay down over all of these sea lanterns in the bottom. So the entire floor is going to be black. And then I'm going to use cyan terracotta and spruce wood, which is why I was blowing up so much spruce before, to create this sort of pattern right here. And then the floor will be like this. I want it to be fairly simple because I don't want to take away from looking at the farm itself and then on the top uh, the entire top layer is going to be gray glass so i need quite a bit of glass um, let's see how much we have in our smelter right now i know i did a bunch last time oh but we're low okay so just over a stack and i believe that's all we got so we're going to need to load quite a bit of sand into this farm. One of these was full. Let's do that. We have to be careful with this pickaxe. It is about to die. But let's load all of this sand into the smeltery so that it is ready to go for us in the next episode to start building. Uh, I think that this is where I'm going to call it today. I've got everything sort of sorted for the build, but 
it is going to take quite a while to actually put it together and I want to do a nice time lapse of it. So I'm going to do that in the next episode, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm enjoying making these videos so much and my audience is growing. So if you're enjoying this, make sure to like the video and subscribe because I'm going to have so many more videos coming out in the future about all sorts of stuff like this. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.